Hey guys, so um, now I'm going to show you a few uh, example games um, where uh, the game was decided by removing the guard tactic, okay? The first game is between Alexander, uh, Alexander Mozienko, who is a very strong Ukrainian grandmaster, as white against Vladimir Potkin, a Russian grandmaster. Um, <clears throat> very interesting that uh, at this level, um, the tactic can be used in such a way. Let's, let's have a look at what I'm talking about. So Queen's Gambit declined, right? Uh, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, c6. So it's turned into a Slav defense with the presence of the pawn on c6. e3, knight bd7, queen c2, bishop d6, g4. This is called Shabalov's variation, I believe. Uh, and the point is, if knight takes g4, uh, white, will, whoops, white will play rook g1. And then when the knight moves, take on g7. That's the idea. <clears throat> um, so g4... Bishop b4 is a funny move, but it's a good move. Um, I like this variation myself as well. I have played it in a tournament and won. Not against somebody of Mozienko's level though, that's for sure. Um, okay, so bishop d2, queen e7, rook g1. Um, bishop takes, knight takes, knight e4. The reason we take this knight, of course, is to get control of the e4 square. So it takes, takes, knight e4, bishop d3, takes, takes, d takes c4, bishop takes c4. Castles. And see, White's <clears throat> it's, uh, attack has sort of had the steam taken out of it. Um, so h4, c5, g5, cd, queen takes d4, rook d8. And now basically, because the knight's about to move and uncover a discovered attack on the queen, he must castle, otherwise he'll never get a chance to castle. When he castled, Black played an excellent move, in my opinion, b5. The point is that... Uh, we attack this bishop <clears throat> and get our bishop a, squ a square uh, for free. And we don't really care if they take this pawn because we'll be able to use the b-file at some point, right? Uh, when we castle on opposite sides, pawns don't matter too much until we like uh, in the end game or something. So bishop b7. And now Motienko played a mistake, queen d6. His, his point was that, uh, okay, if uh, queen takes d6, Rook takes d6, bishop takes f3, he takes on d7, and everything's square. But this is very interesting. Um, just a few moves combination, and this queen will be lost. Let's see how. Rook ac8 check. Right? Of course, if he blocks a check with king here, we just take his queen, right? <clears throat> so king b1. Bishop e4 check. It's still very logical. King here. <clears throat> and now, who is the main guard of the queen? This rook, right? So... Rook c1 check. Uh, this is a 2600 GM allowing this. Rook c1 check. And there's no way uh, to avoid the check besides taking. And then takes the queen. And black um, has won the white queen against such a strong GM. That's, that's very interesting, right? So queen d6, not a good move. Rook c check. Uh, rook c8 check. King b1, bishop e4 check. King a1. And then this key move, rook c1 check. A beautiful removing the guard theme. Rook takes, queen takes d6, and the game is more or less over. Um, against a strong player, you know, you, you are basically lost if you um, if you lose your queen in such a way. Okay, so some whites tried to put up some fight, but it clearly wasn't enough. Bishop c6, a nice little touch. The back rank's weak, so they can't take this. b4, queen d6. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's a nice little move too. If b5, then queen e5 check, king b1, which e4 check, he's game over as well. So black is being very careful, and suddenly the game is over in a few moves. But key point is this nice uh, removing the guide tactic here. Very nice. Okay, next next one. Uh, Jan Timon. Uh, Great guy from the 1980s, 90s, still a great player now. Um, let's see this game. So this is a Pierce defense. White plays some aggressive continuation and puts a bit of pressure on black. But black, as is the hypermodern approach, see this bishop is trying to remove um, pieces from the center by attacking from the side, right? D takes c5, and he doesn't take back, which is very instructive, bishop b7. Then his point is that he just wants to 
own the center like this with the cross-eyed bishops, right? Bishop d2, knight f5, uh, castles the queen side, and now uh, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, bishop takes e5, and this position is, I think it's pretty good for black, right? Because we have this fianchetto bishop in the open b-file, this type of thing that often gives us good attacking chances, and I don't think white has much attacking chances. So h4 is a logical continuation, trying to open the h-file and attack, right? Uh, queen d7, queen h3, uh, very obvious what his plan is. Uh, h5 prevents it, right? He just wants to go h5 himself, so h5 for black makes sense. Rook g1, bishop comes back to g7. Of course, this bishop is very important. We want to keep that. Uh, c6, interesting move. Queen takes, g4, pawn takes, queen takes. ab8, so black is putting his pieces on squares where they have some good influence, right? Uh, rook g1, okay. Knight d4, okay, pretty good move. Rook g3, uh, this this move has some point. Uh, it defends here against some possible tactical tricks in the future. And also after h5, he can try to use uh, his rooks for more attacking on either g1, his other rook on either g1 or h1, right? Uh, rook b4, that's a nice move already, right? Rook, g1, uh, rook b4 uh, threatens already some discovered attacks like knight b3 check followed by rook takes queen, right? And so white plays f4 to avoid that. And now uh, Jan Timmen plays a nice combination. He plays uh, rook takes b2, very common uh, tactical theme, there's rook takes b2 when there's a fianchetto bishop. King takes b2, queen b7 check, king c1, and then they're removing the guard move. Like white would like to play, or black would like to play knight e2 check, and then if knight takes, queen b2 checkmate because you're supported by the bishop, right? The problem is this queen is defending e2 as well. So Timon just plays f5, and you see now the, the white queen can't keep control of this diagonal, right? So for instance, if the queen takes here now, it's no longer guarding e2, so Timon will be able to go knight e2 check. And the king has nowhere to go, so knight takes, and then queen b2 checkmate, right? So this combination is actually very nice. Uh, rook takes b2, king takes, queen check, king moves, then f5, and game over, right? Um, much more sophisticated than the other ones, but uh, the idea of removing the guard of a diagonal is quite interesting in itself, right? It's not removing the guard of a piece, but of a diagonal. Or well, it's actually also removing the guard of a square, right? The e2 square. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, th that's another very nice game. Okay, next one. Uh, okay, Lev Polievsky, uh, awesome player, uh, against Boris Golko, who's also a pretty good player. Um, this is from 1975, so it was some time ago. Gol Golko would have been pretty young then, and Polievsky was a genius at that time, so I can see what happened in this game. So, okay. Basically what's happening here is pretty straightforward, um, bringing pieces out. Rook e4, very interesting move. Um, I think very natural movies like bishop f4 here, but rook e4 is quite interesting, in fact. Uh, rook e8, queen e2. So he, he, he keeps the option open of putting the rook on, on the fourth rank somewhere. Rook e6, bishop f4, h6, a3. A, idea of a3 is to stop stuff like knight b4. Bishop f8. Okay, the bishop just goes back, preempting b4 and to defend the king side. Okay, uh, h4. Okay, h4's idea is to preempt any g5 type of ideas, although they probably wouldn't be so good at the moment. Rook e8, rook a1. g6. Okay, g6. You can tell that Blackie is trying to come around and put as much pressure on this pawn as possible, right? Queen d2. Uh, Capitalizing on that move, trying to attack the weakest on h6. So king, oh, so h5. Bishop g5, good move. Bishop g7, bishop f6. Okay, this is all pretty good. Takes, takes. And now, um, black has to be very careful that white doesn't come in and just checkmate him on g7, right? So uh, queen f5. Now if the queen comes to h6, uh, black will just take on f6, right? So knight g5, attacking um, this rook, of course. Rook takes e4, knight takes e4, 
I take to e4 is a nice move because it, uh, it defends this pawn and still threatens to go queen h6 with mate on um, on g7, right? And this is the current uh, situation in the battle. White would like to do that, black would like to stop it. So black plays knight d8 because he wants to put his knight in here and defend that checkmating square, right? Um, but Polievsky has a nice tactical sequence to, um, to win the game. Queen h6. Threatens mate on g7, of course. Black goes knight e6, defending that uh, g7 square. And so that knight is a key defender in this position. So Polievsky plays a very nice move. Uh, knight d6. Okay. So he, he uses a fork. The fork attacks the rook, attacks the queen. And the point is that if they take the knight, because if they don't take the knight, then that's not much happening then we can remove the guard of g7, right? How do we remove the guard of g7? Rook takes e6, and then it's just hopeless. It's game over, right? Oh, we, we just made on g7. So that combination of uh, playing queen h6, knight e6, knight d6, very nice as well, right? Takes, rook takes e6. Um, I recommend you uh, go through those games over the board because they're very instructive, um, in my opinion. Okay, the last removing the guard game we'll look at is this one. This one's a little bit more simple. The guys aren't as genius as the first guys. Okay, so look at this. Um, D takes e4, d5. White is trying to counterattack the knight because his knight got attacked, but he's missed a small detail. Let's see. Pawn takes knight, pawn takes knight, and then bishop takes c3 check. Pawn takes, and you see, what's the only piece protecting this white queen? Uh, the only thing protecting it is the king, right? So f2 check. Oops. Right, now if the king takes, we take his queen for free, right? Uh, and if the king goes to e2, we have bishop g4 check, which is even more devastating. So f2 check, removing the guard of the queen. So you see, it does come up a lot, this removing the guard tactic as well. And not everybody, you don't need to be as much of a genius as Jan Timon or Polievsky or these guys. You can even do it in some basic ways like this. But make sure that um, you are aware of this tactical theme because it comes up a lot. So now um, you should go and do the worksheets that, that um, come in the next section so that you can become good at finding these remove the guard tactics.